so the first thing I want to talk about this week, and this is pretty cool. Um, there is a group from University of Chicago that uh, is basically a nonprofit under Stephen Levitt, who's, have you guys ever heard of Freakonomics? It was a book from like a decade ago that talked about like these weird economic things. Um, but so he was one of the co-authors of it. And now he's kind of like this like celebrity economist. And uh, he's working on a nonprofit that wants to help support open science, uh, micro publications, and new ways to assess like the value of research outputs. So they reached out to us and were like, hey, we want to work with you guys somehow. Um, I did an introductory call with them. And it was it was pretty funny. They basically like were describing exactly what we were building. And uh, they want to see like micro publications. They want to see a Jupyter notebook that can run code. And then they want to see like a, a new and improved H index. So that's like more or less what we're working on. And they offered their assistance in uh, Stephen Levitt's connections. He's like a, you know, we could drift into the economics type of academic world, I think pretty easily get some users who are like having cool discussions about that kind of thing. And then uh, they also wanted to help out like providing grants for different kinds of content production. And so this is like, I, I think a lot of ideas put together in one here. But one thing that makes me the most excited about the future of Research Hub and like explains to me why anybody would show up and spend their time like sharing papers and commenting on papers is like, like financial stability. Like if I spend a lot of time on Research Hub and I create a lot of good content, like I would want that to help make my career in academia more viable. Um, and so I think these guys have some research funding that they're trying to distribute. And I think they want to help support us with that funding. So I want to toss it out to you guys to think about like um, in, in a perfect world, like I don't know what size grants these would be. Like maybe it's just 5K, maybe it's like 20K split up, you know, in 1K grants or something. Um, I'm not sure. It could be more. I have no idea. Um, but I have another call with them later this week, and I wanted to kind of like propose something to show that we had been doing work on our side. And I'll throw my idea out there, and then I'd love to hear what you all think. But um, to me, micro publications are really exciting. And if we could somehow like create a contest or grant program for early career researchers to share like either like in progress results or negative results, like stuff that's like total trash and would just like end up never seeing the light of day. Like if we could run a contest for that and the most popular negative result or something gets like $5,000, um, to me, that would be kind of cool and align with their mission. So yeah, do you all have any other ideas? And then like, if we did do something with micro publications, Curious what you think like the dollar amount would need to be in order to get people excited. You mean for each submission or for the select few winners of the grant or whatever? I think we have the the design space is massive. We could do whatever we wanted. Like say, imagine like there's just a 5K pot, we can divvy it up however we want and that pot could be larger, I'm not sure. But just thinking creatively of like, how can we turn that grant into the most weekly active contributors that would help to like grow the research hub community? So the one thing that you can take into equation is that if you yourself select who gets the grant money, then you're limiting the potential that could be spent in user activity discussing who gets the grant, right? So if you somehow involve the community into the debates and everything that you know, organically creates user presence and user activity, right? Just because they want to have a say in who gets the money. That being said, I think you, especially during the early stages, I don't think you can afford to just give monetary reward to every single submission just because you know you, you need some filtering mechanism because some of them are not going to be great so i think the best way would be i don't know top 10 of the week people people vote on top 10 submissions of the week or something like that 
just to introduce some some barrier you know so so this is you brought up a super important point uh we should have the dao have a vote like the dao via snapshot which is this tool we we could have a dao vote on maybe like a couple of proposals or like the top everybody's favorite micro publication from the last three weeks or something but we could definitely use the DAO to like make the decision on who receives like whatever funding we try and distribute. Is there anything like I'm thinking? Um, um, is there any requirements for a micro publication? Like, if I were to publish a micro publication, do I need to throw some kind of supplementary information with it, or is it? Kind of like we give them the template and they put whatever they want and submit it. Nami, do you have any thoughts there? Like, what's what's the minimum viable micro publication? Um, that's hard. I mean, so it can be anything, and it can also there's no standard or anything like that. So if you pitch that to researchers, the researcher will be super confused, as I was. Like, I don't know what I can share. And that there's no training about it. I mean, I can see a future where researchers can be educated to share certain things, like I have those research questions and whatnot. But current, currently, I don't see, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's super confusing to the researchers. Yeah, it could be. So there are two paths here, right? The modular way, micro publication bay, and you, you pick one aspect of the paper or one segment of the paper and publish it without anything else right so just the data or just the hypothesis or just the intro which i guess makes it a review so that part will be easier for researchers right because that's something they already have they can just take it from you know their everybody has some you know pieces of written material that they haven't published yet However, it, it's not going to be usable, well, mostly not going to be usable by regular users. Right? Like if I give you just my data right? <laughs> that I collected and like two sentences, what, the, what this data, what are you going to do about it? Nothing, right? Absolutely useless to you. So maybe the other alternative that would be a little bit harder for researchers, but absolutely more, much more usable by regular users would be just to reduce the size, make it micro, not in terms of that it's just one segment of the paper, but make it an entire paper, but just tone down the requirements and length to like a couple sentences. A couple sentences of intro, a couple sentences of method, a couple sentences of results. It has its own problems, but at least people can read it and understand what it means. I wonder if, um like and i i don't know if we consider like um conference papers published you know like i wonder if like we make those the micro publications you know like right like because the, the, there's already a bunch of work put in to make that thing like look good and like flow well um so yeah just curious what you guys think about that that's, that's, awesome. a good, that's a good point. Like we already have a language to communicate what it means. Conference paper, you know what it means. Conference poster, you know what it means for researchers. Right now, if you right. say multiple publication, I don't know what that means. But uh, that's a right, good right, direction. Right. Maybe once you know we figure that out, maybe next step would be digesting that small into smaller pieces. Right. I think we could market that through conferences too. Like I bet it seems like there's a path to actually make people aware of it and to, to mm -hmm. get some uh, submissions. I, I know Mohit is really into conference proceedings. So e even I could see him like helping to champion it within his field to try and get some people to submit some stuff. Yeah. I could, I could see, you know how there's these kind of like, um, I don't know if this is how we want to run it, but there's these kind of uh, like for, I guess, social media influencers, like competitions, maybe not just social media, but like I see this from time to time of like, hey, go like my thing, you know, like, hey, I put together this thing. I'm trying to win a trip. I'm trying to win something like go like my um, entry, you know, and the most the most likes like they'll get a chance to win something. 
I wonder if like that's a paradigm that people like or don't like in academia. Like it might be like it's too, I don't know, like uh, glory hunting, you know, like, uh, because I know like a lot of people in academia, they don't want to just, hey, blast out to everybody, go like my thing, you know, but some kind of paradigm, a corollary there, um, like maybe, yeah, we could start getting users like, hey, I want funding for my thing, here's my project, um, build some kind of like UI around it so people can sort and see all the different projects available. And then, uh, yeah, the winner is this. Funding, so. Is this in reference to DAO voting or what is the context? No, it's more so of like, yeah, maybe there's a DAO vote at the end. Like, like we have like, I don't know, the top 50 submissions and now the DAO votes on that. But like, if let, let's say we get like, I don't know, a thousand submissions. It's like, how do we distinguish which ones are good and which one's bad? Maybe it's like something we can do if you put a page up on Research Hub where like the community can now vote on things and like people can vote on so not just the DAO, but like everybody can vote on something. Um, and then like, ideally the, the top stuff rises at the top. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's something pretty cool here where even conference proceedings, like we could give people research coin, like just as a bonus when they submit it and tell them to use that right. research coin to vote in the DAO vote for which one's their favorite conference proceeding. So then we could, if we get a thousand people submitting conference proceedings, that's a thousand more voters in the DAO who would have, you know, a little slice of like representation to see where the money goes. That could be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so that I think is a great base to be able to collaborate with their team on to see what they want to do. Um, but does anybody have any thoughts before we move on? Doing good? Um, so the next thing, and this is something we've chatted about a little bit and I'm super excited about, but um, Open Science Framework wants to integrate with Research Hub. So I'll show you, they sent over like a proposal on how they wanted to do that. And we're getting back to them on what we think like a reasonable um, V1 or like MVP type of integration is. So um, their idea for the very first integration is essentially, um, giving tokens to authors for sharing conflicts of interest, um, public data sets, and if their preprint is tied to a pre-registration um, for different preprint submissions to Open Science Framework. So the way this would work is like, if this is a bad example, because these all three say no, but if someone submitted a preprint to an Open Science Framework preprint server, and the author self-reported that they included a conflict of interest, a public data set, and it was tied to a pre-registration, um, there would be independent people who could come in and basically verify, hey, I read through the paper, and yes, there is a conflict of interest statement. So check mark, the author has told the truth. Uh, no, there is no public data set, despite the fact that the author said there is, so X. And yes, there is a pre-registration that describes the study shared within the preprint and then checkmark. And the idea here is that authors would earn tokens um, for sharing these disclosures. And then the independent reviewers would also earn tokens for coming in, reading the paper and verifying whether these things had actually been shared or not. Um, the long-term vision Open Science Framework wants to get into is essentially trying to have like um, public peer review of preprints that's incentivized via tokens. And they see this like verification of these three type of like categories as the very first step to doing that through like a seven step process, which they recommended. But um, yeah, overall would love to hear what you all think about that idea. And then I know we've been thinking a little bit about how viable this could be like in the short term. So we'll kind of like chat about that as well. So you guys kind of understand what they're going for with the verification of these three uh, kind of buckets? Mm-hmm. 
And it's only these uh, three kind of uh, buckets that they want you to review, or is there other stuff as well? There would be more in the future, but this would be in in their minds like the very simple uh, V1 in order to like try and start the behavior of rewarding reviewers with tokens. How extensive is that feedback or the review would be? It would be just just a, a check mark or X. Like, was there a conflict of interest statement included in the preprint? Yes or no. So, so no sentences, no actual like review required. I, I don't even think you need to be like a psychology PhD to to do this. Like, I think I could go in and see like, hey, is there a public data set that actually represents what the methods described in the preprint? Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds great. Yeah. It's I didn't think to like that there'll be like uh, X person <laughs> like I Nami Tsunami confirmed this or something like that. Yeah, there there could be reputation tied to it where like you could have like a history of all of the like verification mm -hmm. that you've made personally. But uh, let, let me get this straight. How would research hub integrate with this? Is it just the tokens, uh, like the, the, the RSC, or is there more stuff as well? I think we'd, we'd have to decide the extent of the integration. Likely what would happen is uh, authors would accrue Research Coin on Research Hub and then have to sign into Research Hub in order to claim it. So the way that Open Science Framework wins here is that they get to use research coin as an incentive to have these behaviors, which are like pretty cool. And then we would win because all of the authors and the verifiers would have to log into Research Hub, get a Research Hub profile in order to claim their research coin and then withdraw it to use it however they want it. Do you see a future to like redirect users to discuss on research hub? Like for example, there might be like a text box below the preprint and then discuss about preprint on research hub or something like that. Yes, definitely. I think that would that would be probably within the next step after we did something like this. They they would include a button here. They have like a, a audit button now authors can add. And so we would have like a research hub button under it. Would they be, be open to integrating like maybe a widget from you to basically outsource a comment section from you guys? So like imagine that beneath the paper there would be like a place for you know people talk about this kind of stuff about this paper. And the top three comments are visible to read more and need to go to research hub. That's definitely possible. Um it, it becomes slightly more complex from a technical perspective, but it's definitely possible. And I think that they see our uh, like form functionality um, as something that they could take advantage of instead of building themselves. Mm -hmm. I guess, Coke, do you want to quickly um, share what you're sort of thinking about the potential minimal Bible integration? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we talked to OSF and I'm not sure, Joyce, did you share with the guys the document, the I OSF document? Yeah. Anton and Nami, but I can share with anybody else here who's interested as well. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, yeah, so OSF is um, mainly interested in basically going through, starting off with the review process. So basically, Joyce, what we talked about, starting with an MVP of a review process and then building on top of it. However, um, after giving it some thought, I don't, I definitely agree that we should do it and that would be like the most awesome thing that we can possibly do. Um, and also we have Nami and, and Anton who like have given it considerable thought. So it'll be amazing to work on the review process. However, as a first step, after giving it some thought, I do think that we should probably approach it from the perspective of um, let's, um, and let me share my screen. I think it'll make uh, a little bit more sense. 
I want to like uh, talk a little bit, but show you some stuff. So I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I think, um, so one of the things we brainstormed internally before we talked to OSF was um, how can we make this partnership work? Can we do something to kind of like have uh, both sides win, yet not invest like major amounts of like uh, technical resources uh, at the beginning? Because we want to see like how we work together. So um, I'm thinking that uh, a plotted style button uh, Joyce, like what you alluded to, that would live on every single preprint page. Um, and I'm not sure if that's possible, but like let's assume for a second it is. Um, and the goal is really to do like a proof of concept for working us working together, um, allow scientists to discuss paper via research hub. So uh, whatever, you can ignore my bad design skills, but like something that will allude to the fact that you can discuss this paper and research hub, right? Um, it will give RSC awareness. So in this case, I have like uh, engagement with this paper can earn you and the author author's RSC. Uh, it will also show like how many, um, how much RSC the paper has earned so far. Um, <clears throat> so that can be good, right? We can. Um, give RSC awareness um, and support the author, support OSF. And then uh, like, yeah, so every single paper on OSF will have this. And additional details, right? So if author is logged in, we can show um, some kind of a button that alludes to the fact that you can claim your profile and receive some RSC, which is like one of the features we're working on. Uh, the technical difficulties that um, can we have papers like on our side without a DUI? When do we upload the papers to RH um, and stuff like that? So there is some technical consideration. So we start with that and then we move on to further integration. Um, I'll skip two and three for now. Um, the main thing I want to then I think after we do this, the main thing is like, if it works well, we can target, uh, we can begin with the review process and do the Oracle thing that Joyce was talking about. So basically just ensure the accuracy in, of author data and claims and, set, um, and bring social awareness to the process. Um, and maybe, I don't know because I'm not a blockchain guy, but maybe we should be putting these reviews on the blockchain Maybe, I don't know. But let me pause here and get your thoughts. Does it, like step one, does it make sense? Um, do you guys think it's a good starting point? Uh, and also, what do, you, what do you guys think about this whole thing? Yeah, I, uh, I like the, with the button kind of stuff, but the only remark I have is that like, uh, I see the little question mark you have there. Uh, does it somehow explain what RSC is? Because we all know about it as we are involved in research, but as just a a novel user, you don't know what RSC is. And like for instance, lab routes, you can uh, claim points and then you can win some t-shirts or some mugs, but I'm not really interested in that kind of stuff. And yeah, totally. for me, that would be really important to know. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not a good designer, but I totally agree that when we actually have a designer do this, it will explain in much detail exactly what RSC is and what the process. Um, my, my goal, my personal goal is to bring um, awareness to RSC because I think that once people become aware of it, they will engage, they'll want to make RSC and they'll engage more with research jobs. So I totally agree, Philip, that it's a very important point. Yeah, I think hopefully you always have to have some expertise to be able to know like exactly what their users would need to see, like how cryptocurrency friendly they are, like kind of what they want in order to make a track to them. But I really like the idea of 
like having preprint servers with these functionalities that will yeah i guess that's the way forward to get some traction on the site of more active users do you guys think it makes sense to um and i know joyce we haven't gotten a chance to touch base but to start with something other than reviews before we delve into the review process? What do you guys think? Kobe, when you say other than reviews, do you have an example of what that? Oh yeah, be? I meant the, um, that button that I was showing with the click here to um discuss this paper and research hub also showing how much rsc the paper is uh, earned <clears throat> so like that type of mvp as opposed to an mvp that incorporates like the oracle like um uh, review um aspect i mean that that depends, right? So the the functionality that Brian Nozick proposed, right? So the verification process, it doesn't require a lot of people to be valuable. What you're proposing requires a fully functional, populated, popular research hub. If you have if you are certain that this is this moment is coming soon, then you can start implementing, I think, the the discussion functionality right but if if not if it's go, if you think it's going to be humble for a while maybe focus on the verification instead in my opinion yeah i don't i don't disagree at all because i do think there is some technical challenges too like if we're going to put this uh, button on papers at osf then the implication is that in order to discuss the paper, you need we need to have the paper in research hub, and then there is a challenge to it as well. Um, whereas the review process, maybe starting with a subset of papers, um, and then as opposed to everything. So yeah, I um, I think it's um, definitely something to be considered. Yeah. So we're at uh, uh, 4.30 my time right now. So um, does anybody else have any thoughts here? We'll get back in contact with OSF and hopefully be able to report back on next steps by the next community call or so. Doing good? Cool. Um, yeah, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, we've had a little bit of success posting papers from Research Hub to our science in order to like help drive uh, traffic to Research Hub. Um, we've done this like maybe three or four times over the last year where like in a weekend we can get 50,000 clicks. Um, there was a podcast we did, uh, Anton, Nami and I a couple weeks ago about the like mental health effects of long COVID. And um, I shared that paper over the weekend on our science. We got to the top of our science, got 50,000 new users, and um, we only had like 200 of them sign up. And of those 50,000, I think there was like 10 or 11 that ended up becoming weekly active contributors. And so we feel like that's a pretty low conversion rate of like eyeballs to the site actually turning into people who upvote or comment or share a paper. Um, so I, I guess the first question is like, do you all have any thoughts on why that may be? And then the second question is just of the nature of Reddit, these are mostly mobile users. It was like 85 to 90% mobile. And so curious if you all have like used our mobile site and if so, like if you have any feedback on ways to improve the design in order to try and like make it a little bit more user friendly in case, you know, that could be the reason why the conversion rate is lower.
I have never used the mobile version, so I don't know. But about the conversion rate, I don't know. I, I still think that it's really hard to figure out what are you supposed to do on Research Hub? What are you allowed to do? What is the intellectual property aspect that you're allowed to share other people's papers? Because it kind of seems and feels like it's almost becomes your paper when you share it, you know, instead of the authors themselves. So I, I don't know if there is like, is there, is there should be an onboarding, more extensive onboarding or like a massive overlay showing you specific goals that you need to do next to be an active member. But I don't know. Do you have the uh, length of time that they were spending on the site before uh, dropping off? Yeah, I can pull it up. Um, it'll take me one second. The grand majority were like 30 seconds. And then there would be like tiers, like standard deviations. Like some people would stay for like 20 plus minutes and click a lot. Um, but the grand, the grand majority would be like 30 seconds or under. Like they would look at the paper, click the DOI, maybe download the PDF. Um, and we actually had a pretty good uh, discussion going under it. Like there were maybe like 10 or 15 comments um, that we all talked about during the podcast. So people would also browse those. Um, but that's a great point, Nick. Let me, I'll, I'll try and pull up the actual data there. Yeah, if they're, they're spending more than 30 seconds, then that would, uh, you, you could deduce that they're like trying to figure out how to use the site. But 30 seconds seems a little bit uh, too short of a time to uh, even think about like how to sign up or uh, how does it work. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's I agree looking at metrics is important. And also, and on, on the other side of the spectrum, maybe having more qualitative information about users' experience also important, I feel like. So what what are they doing like in the like kind of interview format? So, oh, there's a metric. But yes, I just want to say. It looks like almost two minutes. Um, bounce rate is, did they click another page? or did they just leave immediately from the page that they got to? So 85% of people just went to the paper page and then left, which I don't even, that that seems okay to me. Um, yeah. And two minutes is, you know, it's decently significant. And there was a lot of conversation under it. So I could see like at least a minute reading the discussion. So it's two minutes on the page. So that's enough for people to be like checking stuff out. Totally. So. But on the page itself, without going anywhere else, right? Do yeah, you... going anywhere else. Only so this is total page views of the page I posted to Reddit, and then right. going to the home page, only three hundred thirty-six. So Maybe. we have we have touched on that topic in the past, but do you have any plans for like suggested content? You know, after you go, you scroll to the very bottom of the comments. Nothing else left. You want to read something else, but. You don't. You're not. You're not quite sure how the website works yet, but Research Hub can offer you similar comments or similar papers, something like that, without going to the main page and going to the hubs. I don't know. Did you think that would work? It's a great point. I uh, I was going to share this with the team internally, but I'll just post it here and then post it in our group too. But Research Square. You guys heard of this? This is a preprint server. Um, I think it's funded by like the Elsevier types, um, and so their paper page is kind of similar to ours. Um, I think there's a lot we can take away from it, but they do have um, suggested like more from the nature portfolio on the right side, so they kind of have like suggested papers. I'm not sure if people actually click it or not, but it's definitely something we should add eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great point as well. Um, like for me as a user, I do kind of click to other pages or when scrolling even for instance on Amazon and looking for some products and like, okay, maybe if, if I want to buy a PC and it says, ah, this uh, computer mouse is great with it. Okay, maybe that's a stupid uh, example, but still, I guess it works, especially for people my age maybe as I'm uh, the youngest, maybe, with Thomas. Um, I think that works. 
it, it, um, makes it, it does yeah. hubs, and the hubs are like you know kind of the same thing like hey if you're interested in this here's my hubs here's what else you'd be interested in i wonder if we could feed individual recommendations to paper pages based on people's like history of clicking through things or what hubs they follow do you use mm -hmm. hubs like do do you ever use the hub section instead uh, except for the very first time where you kind of like select them i no. personally have never been there so i don't know if this is a good place to send people to be honest yeah i agree uh i when i click when, when i like sporadically browse for comments i rarely do it through like articles like that because they are like one one from one among the thousand right they are like just pieces of information for me thrown at me they are not individualized in any way or shape or form so i rarely click on the articles themselves however i do click if i see comments like if you if you could if on the right you could have like select comments the most supported comments i think that would be more appealing than the names of the papers themselves so Anton, you're thinking kind of like on the homepage, how we have like a, a list of like activity yeah. on the right side, bringing that to the page. Yeah, yeah. It either replace the latest activity altogether with the uh, you know select trend in comments, or at least add another one or something like that. It'd be interesting to experiment with that just to see if we could get people to click around more when we bring them in from Reddit. Does anybody else have any thoughts here? So the last thing that we can do, and I'll turn off the uh, um, recording for this, but um, Nick has an idea for a crypto company.